Hello, it's Red Headed Riding Hood here. Red for short, I'm still not feeling great. So I don't even know if I'll go to church tomorrow, but um, we'll see, but I didn't want to miss a reading. So influence, what we put into a child's mind and a child's life when he is young is there for good. That is what Ignatius La Jolla meant when he made his famous dictum, give me a child for the first seven years of life and I care not who has him afterwards. Wow. Wow. Um, this is what I'm learning like in, in my Lisa A. Romano class is about your programming from as a child and it's how you learn how to interact with people. And I unfortunately learned to be codependent because that's what my mom was and my dad was narcissistic, a covert narcissist. And she just, she just catered to him mostly. And um, um, most of the time, but um, she could be pretty feisty too sometimes. <laughs> but, but mostly she put up with his his um, um, sometimes uh, very bad behavior. Um, not constantly, thankfully, but um, he was a little bipolar too, so sometimes he would just go off and want to say he wanted a divorce. And he he um, really, for, for sure, for sure, we only know that one time that he cheated on her, but I don't know, who knows? <laughs> so... And uh, he said it was okay because they were going to get divorced, but they, they didn't end up getting a divorce. She wouldn't sign the papers. So anyways, but anyways, that's, that's my story. From his earliest days, we should teach the child to have regard for truth. Absolutely. Boswell tells of a breakfast table discussion with Johnson in the Thrale household. I don't know who that is. Johnson was insisting on a strict attention to the truth, even in the slightest detail, an attention which he himself meticulously practiced. Accustom your children, he said, constantly to this. If a thing happened at one window and they, when relating it, say that it happened at another, do not let it pass, but in, instantly check them. Do not know, do you not know where deviation from the truth will, you do not know where deviation from the truth will end. Boswell agreed that once you allow variations into any narrative, you do not know where they will end. Mrs. Strell objected to what she considered an undue fussiness. Little variations in narrative, she insisted, must happen a thousand times a day, if one is not perpetually watching. Dr. Johnson thundered, well, madame, you ought to be perpetually watching. It is more from carelessness about truth than from intentional lying that there is so much falsehood in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, I caught someone at work not telling the truth. Well, a couple, couple times, but you know, when they say they clean the scum line and they didn't clean the scum line and the managers mentioned it when we had meetings. And then um, the other day, this one guard said he came in to check on things. The other guards that were there said, nobody came in to check on anything. The, the chems were not written down in the log book. And he's like, oh, I didn't come out here. And like, why would you not check in with the guards on the stand if you came in to check on things? And I'm like, what? Like, what? Like, there's no, like, there's kids running the pool. It's like ridiculous. And I'm like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm out. Adios, amigos. I'm done here. <laughs> I've had enough of this nonsense. But yeah, truth. From the earliest days, we should teach the child the meaning of Christian love, Christian consideration, and Christian courtesy. Too often, the child is treated to the sight of his parents arguing and bickering and criticizing and differing with each other. Yeah, we did that, which was not good. He may well unconsciously absorb the idea that married life consists of a continual jangling argument. Jangling, okay. So often we seek to reserve the right to treat our loved ones with a discourtesy which we would never use to strangers. We must see to it that the child is brought up to have the conviction that the atmosphere of the home is Christian courtesy and Christian love. From the earliest days, teach the child the habit of worship on God's day. I think that it was Dick Shepherd who used to declare what was to happen to the child who was brought up to regard Sunday as the day on which daddy stayed in bed until lunchtime. There is nothing stronger in this world than the force of habit, and one of the greatest defenses of church going is to make it a habit. Day in, day out, we are inserting into a child's mind things which will n never come out. See to it that the right things and the fine things and the noble things are inserted there. It says day in, day out, we are inserting into the child's mind things which will never come out. But I don't know why it says that, because they do come out. <laughs> See to it that the right things and the fine things and the noble things are inserted there. <coughs> I don't know why it says it that way. I wonder if that's a mistake. But anyways, um, don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too. Don't forget to pray for Red and to get over this cold <laughs> so I could go to California next week because Red is praying for you. Bye. Love you.